Walter finished birch. birch or whatever it is. Walter uh, birch. Yeah, birch plywood. Walter and then birch. I veneered um, in the vacuum bag. <coughs> Uh, curly maple veneer too, that that substrate, um, top and bottom. I'm not sure if I use the same thing, um, but that you know that was real straightforward. But where it where it got a little complicated now, this plywood's on a radius. So um, I had never done that before. So I got some uh, got some bending plywood. Okay. So when you order this, it's six, it's eighth of an inch. You can have it bend, um, you know, the four foot way or the eight foot way. So this sheet that I got, um, it bent the, uh, the four foot way, the way the grains were on it. Or no, the, this is the length way, because the, the grain went around that way. Um, so there's, there's two, uh, underneath this, there's two layers of this eighth of an inch bending ply, and then a skin of um, the curly maple on the front and the back. And I'll pass this around just so you know, everybody can kind of see what this is. And uh, here's just a sample of you know, the, what, what went on. And, um, so for this, you know, I was worried a little bit about spring back, but there's not much of a radius there, and that bending plywood bends very easily. So I, I just used, um, you know, Type Bond 3, which since then I've read some articles and there's a lot of complaints about it. I'm not going to go into that, but there's a lot of complaints about that mater that glue. Um, about creep, right? Yeah, just, I don't know, people just uh, don't have anything good to say about it. So, um, so yeah, but, uh, so, okay, so, I get, I'm going to build this panel. I made a little template where I, you know, made it oversized. So what I had to do was I made a, a, a form. So this is, this is this radius, which came off the template. Um, Maybe that's why they make this template for it. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there I go. All will be gone. So I made this form, and it, it's not solid, but it's it's pretty strong because you know when you're putting this in a vacuum bag, tremendous pressure coming down on there, and if it's not strong enough, it'll either explode or deform. Um, so underneath there, as a top, is a I just brought a piece of this. Um, this is similar to that piece I'm panning, panning around, but it's called wiggle board. Um, I mean, it's got another name too, but... So if you're doing a big curved panel, you can glue two of these pieces together in a similar form. But I use this underneath here just to give this some strength. And, and then I um, you know, put the eighth of an inch bending ply on top of it. And this is readily available too, and uh, I just... I just had a couple scraps of this, and I, you know, some lumber yard was a remnant, so I just uh, appropriated it. But um, where, where do you get that from? Well, you can order it from any good lumber yard. Um, you can you can special order. Same thing with that bending ply. But I think this is uh, I mean, it's probably a trade name, but I've always heard it called wiggle board. Wiggle wood. So, um, so yeah, so you know, I built this form. This worked. This worked great. Put it in there. Um, you know, pressed it all at once. I th maybe I did just the two pieces, and then I did the veneer after it. Um, and it came out of the form. And it, there was no spring back. It was. It was really good. Um, so this really mimicked my shape. But then I had to. I had to cut a rabbit for this thing to sit in here because it's. It's a raised panel basically, even though it's a plywood panel. So. Like, how hard could that be? But um, the bottom of this is on an angle, the first thing, and it's got to all register. So I actually used a trim router for that, but every fence had to have its own characteristic. So the fence that sat on top of here had to have an angled, an angled fence on it so it would follow that profile. Right. So, you know, I, I laid out my layout lines and I was able to do that and, and this. So that was pretty straightforward, but now, I got um, I got a route, a slot here, um, and uh, thank you. <laughs> so I had to route this slot. So basically, I just took the the router and um, you know put a radius fence on it, a longer one, and started from the top and worked my way down. And uh, I think I had to take two passes because that was just slightly bigger than the quarter inch bit. Um, so you know I made up some samples and. And it worked good, but you know it's kind of nerve-wracking at that point because the more time you you spend building the parts, um, you know it's kind of no turning back. You'd be building more parts. So, um, but it actually worked out very well. 
and uh, and that panel fit in there um, real good. And there wasn't a lot of there wasn't a lot of mismatch or any problems on that. So um, so that that went well. Um, yeah, let's see, the top. Um. So okay, the top. Um, so when I ordered this, which most slabs, you know, I think literally this me measured like two and a quarter inches. And it was relatively flat, but for my design, um, I only wanted an inch thick, slightly more. And, um, you know, this was 20 inches wide. What's that? I know, yeah, a yeah, serious bandsaw. So I used, um, which, you know, you could do a, a YouTube, look on YouTube for somebody that's doing this. And basically, it just made a frame for uh, a frame for that big slab to sit on. And uh, you probably are. But this was scrap plywood. So that cost anything. So you know, this was a little wider. It was 20 inches wide. It was on a 40 some inches wide or length long. And I built this little carriage. Um, sit on top of here. Can you turn over half of it into sawdust? More than that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. And uh, so this is the router bit. You know, I, I don't know, it's maybe an inch and a quarter. Is that the special blade? No, it's just an inch and a quarter, like dado, dado blade. I think they get these monstrous. Yeah, but you know, um, honestly, so this is just a two horsepower router, and it's pretty good. But the bearings aren't aren't sounding too good now, <laughs> so, so I think I'm gonna have to change the bearings. And it was probably because I was taking too heavy of a cut. Yeah. And believe me, um, like I filled up two dust bags of, of sawdust. Uh, you know, the amount you were taking. Yeah, off. exactly. And the other thing was too, um, the bottom of this. Um, so this was 20 inches wide, but the bottom was like 16. So it really, it really slides in. So I really had to just take it off the bottom, so I would have, you know, uh, parallel sides. No, it didn't. I, honestly, so I would take about a half inch off, about a week, every week, and I would just put it between coals to keep it straight. So the, the moisture would equalize between the two sides. It didn't really have a warping problem, which I was a little worried about. Um, so basically. You know, I had this big thing set up on my table saw, had the dust mask on, and just, you know, going back and forth like this, just taking, trying to take a light cut. And it really didn't take that long. I couldn't see for a day because my eyes were just like, you know. So, safety glasses. If I was to do this again, yeah, safety glasses, but it didn't matter. It wasn't like, it was just the particles everywhere. So, if I was to do this again, we would do it outside. What's that? Now it was winter. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, so, yeah, it would have worked. Think it worked. So anyway, it really went fast. And, you know, if you had to, if you just were leveling some of this, you would just put, you know, shim shingles under one side. And I actually had, you know, just screwed down some cleats to kind of hold it in place, but the thing was so heavy, you don't really need to. So <clears throat> if anybody's, you know, thinking about building a slab, this really did not take that long to, uh, to surface this. Um, and, you know, look, unfortunately I had to surface it, it, you know, thin it in half. But, you know, the process, um, the process of really, it, it worked well. Um, and, you know, this thing just was just something I saw online and I just put it together. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> it uh, did a good job. But seriously, um, I can hear these bearings now, so I'm off to change them out. And the only thing I can think is, you know, just taking too heavy of a cut is overworking the uh, router. I'm guessing you don't have a scrub plane. <laughs> Not one I'm going to use. Was it pretty much flat? Yeah, it was really pretty good. I mean, maybe, maybe three eighths of an inch over the whole thing. In hindsight, maybe you uh, could have gotten a lot faster if you would have just run it through the table saw with the dado blade. Yeah, um, but I see. The other thing I was worried about is, you know, when you do that, then you you put a lot of. Um, you know, moisture difference from the, you know, when you cut something that thick, typically it's a lot different moisture in the center. Oh, yeah. And then when you try and um, try and work with it, you know, you got a new banana. So that's why I was really kind of uh, sneaking up on it, because I wanted to use the top. Do you know how many hours you have on your router? Because the other thing that goes on them on my router, they say after so many hours you got to change the brushes out. Yeah, no, I just hear like, you know, you know how like when a bearing's starting to squeal a little, yeah, that's what it sounds like, so. Yeah, but sometimes when the brush, the brushes okay. get down low, they'll be on metal. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, I think it's, the, I, I'll check that, but I'm, I'm pretty sure it's just the, the bearings probably uh, overstressed. And new, new they revenue. Work. Yeah, yeah. The wash factory <laughs> stores. Are yeah, right yeah. Out. And I saw a YouTube video, it doesn't look that hard to change that. Um, well, you can get the parts from too. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. I assume they're sealed bearings. Huh? Sealed bearings. What? They sell. It's the bit. It's yeah. Sealed. Uh, it might be fifty bucks. No, I didn't. Um, yeah, it's. A, I think it's that company, CMT. And you know, I just got the size from, uh, you know, what I saw on on YouTube. And you know, they they definitely sold bigger ones. But the, you know, unless you have a three horsepower router, you're just putting a lot of stress on that yeah, router. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, you know, when you're. What's that? What is it? It's soft maple. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you know you're still you're hogging a lot of material weight. And, um, you know when you're pulling it across, it's kind of hard to regulate how much you're taking. So um, you're choking on a sawdust. You're trying to move it along. <laughs> okay. Um, Next time you build that box, figure out a way to put your dust collector on it. Yeah. Well, that router, that you know, it doesn't have a, rat, a dust pickup. But um, did you go out to Aldersburg? No. Yeah, I know. It's very, they have walnuts that, they have, does, well, I, maybe I mentioned that earlier, you, you know, their online yeah. pictures were very good, yeah, yeah. you know, and then but I had that's asked, that's the little, I mean, yeah, it's they probably have more, yeah, oh, they, yeah, they don't use um, so yeah, no, it was a really good way to, it was, honestly, it was a very good way to, to get what I needed, because I had a specific width I needed, and it was a look I was kind of looking for, too, so, and honestly, you know, this thing was a, uh, the original price for it was like, I don't know, over eight foot long was like $280. And, you know, it took maybe 80 bucks off because I didn't need everything. Yeah. But yeah. honestly, I saw slabs, like almost the same thing. At Hearn and Hearn, how much was it? Well, Hearn doesn't have it, but other places, um, $800, you know? So, I mean, their, their prices were very fair. Um, That's because they're in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did, did you give any thought taking this over to a... Uh, <coughs> Somebody that has a bandsaw mill to cut it in half. Yeah. I bet you, I bet you, Aldifer could have could have done yeah. that for you. Yeah, but you know, until I got that, until I got that piece, I wasn't even sure exactly. Yeah, because I was working on a picture. Yeah, right. Yeah. Sure. So, so I'll, I'll I'll jump to the glue up process. Um, <laughs> so, um, you know, I, glued, I glued the two ends up together, and that was that was really pretty easy because yeah, I only had you know a few joints to put together, uh, like eight joints at once, and get this floating panel in here. Um, so that went pretty good, but to, to glue the rest of it up, and I could have used an extra set of hands, and I was using the, the uh, old brown glue, which has a pretty long open time. But there was just a lot of joinery there, and um, you know every clamp in the shop was on the table there. And I did like a dry glue up first, or dry clamp up first. But it was still because um, I had to glue this panel in at the same time, so it was um, it was a crazy glue up. But you, didn't, you weren't able to like do the ends first, and then well, I did do the ends first, yes. So the ends assemblies were done, but then I had to. I had to tie all the stretchers together, I put that panel in, and then these pieces. The, the did you make curved calls? Call. What's that? Did you make curved calls? This one by yourself. Um, no, I just put, um, I just have uh, like rubber on, well, I put rubber on the end of the uh, clamps, uh, which worked actually pretty good. Um, oh, there's another thing too about, so along this process, I had a few dents, which, you know, you're going to get. And honestly, the steam iron with a little wet rag, um, we'll take that dent and almost pull it completely out hmm. to the point where if you've never had if you've never tried that you need to because then then you just have a little bit of like card scraper to clean it up um, because you know like I said I was working on this thing from uh, January to I guess the middle of March roughly yeah the end of March three at least three months and you know when you're moving all that around so many times you're gonna get some things and dents mm -hmm. so uh, that a hot iron um, with a little water on a rag make, made a big difference. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so it blew up, like I said, if I was doing something like this again, I'd make sure that uh, Wilbur was home so, <laughs> so I could get somebody to help me. But, um, but I got it done and, uh, and it really, it, it squared up really well. And I think a lot of that was because, um, you know, all the, all the joinery was cut straight and, uh, and it, it squared itself up. Um, 
And uh, so then once it was all once it was all glued up, well, let me leave five back. So I finished the um, I finished the, the plywood panels first. Um, partly because you know once you capture something in a, a dado like that, it's very hard to you know finish it. It's not going to shrink or expand. It's just easier to finish it first. Um, and I wanted to try and keep the, uh, the maple color very light. But I put seal coat on it first, and in hindsight, I think that was a little mistake um, because it imparted a little more amber. And um, so I sanded it back as far as I thought I could because the veneer, you know, you could sand through the veneer pretty, pretty easily. And then I got um, a product from Mohawk. So I've used water base before, and water base would have kept the maple, you know, from yellowing. But um, Mohawk made this uh, lacquer that was a, like a clear non-yellowing lacquer. So that's, that's what I did for, uh, for finishing that plywood, um, the veneer. Um, the top, uh, you know, after, after this was all routed, I hand planed this way because there was a little cup to it. So I hand planed it pretty good and then used a random orbital sander to um, just kind of level everything out. And it's pretty soft wood, so um, that, worked, that worked very well. Oh, and then, um, so this is, it's like a live edge, but it, it's a faux live edge. Because, <laughs> too, too many because the, natural shape, the natural shape of this um, board just really wouldn't have lend itself. You know, one was a lot wider than the other end. So um, I, put it on a, I put it on a table saw, just drew a, not a table saw, a band saw, just kind of drew a squiggly line, angled a little bit, and just kind of fed it through there. And then after I got that done, I clamped it in my vise um, vertically and then used files. And, uh, did you hit it with things? Did I what? Did you bang it with nah, things? Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> just, just kind of smoothed out the bandsaw marks. And then just use one of those flap sanders. Just kind of break the edges a little bit. And uh, I'm, I'm very happy with the way it came out because it really would have looked very rough um, had I used the natural edge that, you know, this tree with the way it grew. Um, and then I sprayed this um, outside, and that was one of the challenges too, because the weather really was never cooperating. Um, I've used this before in a, in a, a spray system, but Mohawk makes, it's called a pre-catalyzed clear lacquer. So it dries real fast, so it's very forgiving for outside, but because it's this pre-catalyzed, um, it's, it's like an epoxy, so it's very hard. So, <clears throat> You could scratch it, but I'd say it's almost twice as hard as like normal polyurethane. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I did a kitchen table with it too, and it, you know I've had that for like two years, three years, and it's really holding up well. Yeah, and if it's pre-capped, then the alcohol won't go through it either. Okay. Yeah. So it's, you know, um, I was kind of agonizing what kind of finish I was going to put on it, but I think uh, I think this was a good choice because it's just a more durable finish. Um, so, so that went that went fairly well. The top, oh, and then I, you know, after after it uh, dried real well, you know, I rubbed it out with steel wool, like four zero steel wool, and that wool lube as a lubricant. And um, I didn't wax or anything. I just just uh, rubbed it out. And it uh, the this I was originally going to try and spray this because I've used a lot of that Minwax um, spray, and I really like the way it flows out. But I started thinking about trying to mask all of this because I didn't want to spray this because I was trying to keep the yellowing polyurethane off the uh, light color. So I gave up and I just used um, the wipe on polyurethane. Just put you know, light coats on it and I did um, maybe six or, or four or five coats. Just, just putting it on real, real light, just wetting a small rag and you know, finding some raking lights so I could see where I'd been. And just kind of keep going like that. Just put a light coat on it, and then it would dry overnight, and I'd put another coat on the next day. And that was a, that was a really good solution, and I'm very happy with the way that came out. Because on, on vertical surfaces, like, it, you know, if you're trying to brush this on, it's just not going to, you're going to get runs. You're going to have some problem or, or lap marks on the edge. But that little, um, just a, a wet cloth, just lightly um, keeping the edge wet, going over it, um, it went fast and it worked well. What about the inside edges where it's up against the maple? Or did you do yeah. those? I did that before. Oh, okay. I, I, okay. So I had, I had, before I glued this up, I used the uh, seal coat to kind of um, do everything. And I think, uh, 
I don't know, maybe I just wrap this around a little bit, but there's not much finish on those inside edges. Okay. But it's not, um, you know, it's, it's really, uh, it's enough to protect it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, is there much sanding? Uh, I'd like to say no, but there was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really, um, I learned how to use a spoke, spoke shave a lot better before this project was done. Um, you know, trying to make sure that, you know, after it came off the saw, after it came off the band saw, I would take it to that random orbital sander, and it's, it's just a belt sander that goes up and down, that um, the Black & Decker one, I mean, it's the one that Home Depot sells for 200 bucks, and it, it worked actually very well. So it got me, you know, it got me a somewhat fair curve, and then just used a spoke shave set real fine to just kind of take, take the unevenness out. And if you <laughs> skew the blade, just like, you know, when you're planing something, if you skew the blade, um, it doesn't cut as deep, and you, and um, it worked. Excuse me, it worked very well. But but to your point about the sanding, there definitely was a little mismatch. And before I tried to glue it up, I, I spent time putting this together and seeing where the problem was. Because once you glue this together, now you're dealing with cross grain, so you got to eliminate the scratches. Um, so I spent a lot of time, you know, clamping it up, seeing which where the problem area was, and taking it off and spoke shaving it or planing this, whichever it was. Mm. But you had to have all these planes basically the same same dimension in and out. So mm. it definitely took some time. But before I glued it, it was pretty good. And then I was telling somebody earlier, um, I stumbled on this and just because I was spending a lot of time just you know with a cork block trying to just flush this up. And I have one of those uh, multi-tools that, that fine mm. and I put um, a fairly uh, light grit, maybe 150 grit on there for the ones that were, were really pretty miserable. And uh, that did a good job flushing it up and then from there I went to hand sanding to kind of um, flush everything uh, and get it all on the same plane. Mm. Uh, and then the top's held on by buttons, you know, because the top's going to move. So, um, you know, just use the traditional buttons that I made to kind of hold it in place. And uh, is this a medallion or a coin? Yeah, medallion? it's that little uh, figure eight. That medallion that I had made. You can ask. So, um, yeah. yeah. So nice. it's, uh, it's you know, it just says it has my name on it. So, um, so it was a really fun project. Um, you know, uh, you know, I'm talking about some agony in the middle of the way, but you know, like each thing you do, you learn a little more, and. Uh, my project next year, I want to try and build a chair, the Queen Anne chair. So this is a good uh, primer for that. Um, and, uh, uh, you know, there was a lot of a lot of things I never not, I never had done before, which is you know the curved panel in the vacuum press. Um, I've done a I've done a. a